This video is sponsored by Squarespace. The Steam Deck is awesome for games, like really awesome. But I wonder, can you take this little portable computer and dual purpose it as a digital art tool? The answer is yes, otherwise this would be a really short video. I've broken it into three chunks. A good, better, best, if you will. Okay, that's not right. Maybe a uh, broken, pretty good, and oh hell yeah category. So, let's get to it. If you're not super familiar with the Steam Deck, there's one thing that you should know about it. It is fiddly. That is the Steam Deck's greatest strength and its greatest weakness rolled into one. It's great because it's basically a computer with a controller strapped to the sides. And you can do anything if you're willing to fiddle. It's a weakness because if you're used to, say, I don't know, a Nintendo Switch, where you just turn it on, you download your games, and you can start playing, that's not really the case with the Steam Deck most of the time. Sometimes it is. If you open the Steam Store, download a game, it's not that different of an experience. But man, are you missing out on a lot of cool stuff if that's all you do. Now, sometimes those other cool features are a little bit fiddly, and sometimes they are a lot fiddly. And today, we're going to be a lot fiddly. Okay, tier one, the broken tier, AKA the non fiddly tier. This is a touch screen, so your finger or a cheap dumb stylus will work. And there are drawing apps in the Steam store. Now, you're not going to get pressure sensitivity with your finger or a dumb stylus or much accuracy. So don't expect a whole lot here. Now, what about that software? Here, I was pretty excited. Krita, which is probably the best free drawing software in the universe is available on the Steam store. There is one catch though, when they place it in a store, Store, whether it's Steam or the Microsoft Store, they do charge for it. Here it is $14.99. Also worth noting, it says that it is not supported on the Steam Deck, so we will see. They were right. Not supported on the Steam Deck. Krita has a lot of problems here. Probably the biggest one is that when you're in the menus and you're trying to create a new file, it just kinda hangs half the time. I have to leave the app, I have to force quit it, start again, try again. So maybe one out of every three times that actually works properly. Now for drawing, it's 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 not that good. Now, many of the features that you might expect to be here because it's a touch screen, like using it on Windows, just aren't. For example, you can't pinch and zoom. You can't use two fingers to pan around. And of course, drawing with your finger or a stylus is just, ugh, it's horrible. A lot of the interface is also hidden because the screen is so small. For example, I can't get to the slider that lets me change my brush size. I can't get to the tool that lets me zoom in and out, which means we are going to plan B. Nice thing about the Steam Deck, there's a single USB C port along the top so you can plug in a keyboard and a mouse or in my case a dongle which will let me plug in a keyboard or a mouse so with those connected I can now use keyboard shortcuts so I can rotate the screen I can zoom in and out I can even resize my brushes that gets critted dangerously close to usable that's probably an exaggeration it's still wonky every time I resize my brush it takes a few beats to actually catch up with my finger when I start to draw again for all intents and purposes this experience is kind of broken. So let's add more fiddle. Steam Deck lets you go to a Linux desktop mode by choosing the power from the Steam Deck menu and then choosing desktop mode. It is entirely possible to use the desktop mode with the Steam Deck controllers, but good night, is it easier to do this with a keyboard and mouse? I am keeping those plugged in. So here we have the XP Pen Deco MW. It is a tiny little drawing tablet. I chose this one because it's green. It's hard to find a green tablet nowadays and because it works with Linux. First thing first, Let's open up a web browser and download Krita. This time we're getting it from the web, so it is free. I should also point out, I uninstalled the version from Steam before I did this. I found that the desktop version of Krita works far better than the Steam version. I also went to XP Pen's website, grabbed some of the Linux drivers there. There are three different drivers for various flavors of Linux. The Steam Deck is based on a version of Arch, so I am gonna be using the tar GZ file. They also have some PDFs on this page with instructions on how to install this on Linux. I'm going to be following those as well. I should also say this is where things started to fall apart for me. This is the first time in my life I have ever used Linux, so to say I am inexperienced, is an understatement. For example, oh man, I'm gonna make myself look stupid here. In the instructions, it says type sudo and then drag the installation file into the terminal. I didn't know I was supposed to hit the space bar after sudo before dragging the file in. Even once I figured that out, I still was having a hard time getting the drivers installed. There's probably gonna be some guy in the comments like, why didn't he just sudo bash the executable and jlog to access the broccoli sifter 3.7 G extension while in proxy mode? Because I don't know what that means. Update, the pen is working. I never got the drivers installed, but 
here we are. I don't know why, but it's working. Really beautiful pen pressure. I will not look gift pen pressure in the mouth. We are plowing ahead. So I'm calling this a smashing success. From desktop mode with a drawing tablet, this is a 100% legit art tool now. Once you familiarize yourself with Krita, you're gonna be able to make great stuff here. But I am not done. I took this XP Pen Artist 10 pen display tablet, which I reviewed a few weeks back, and I plugged it in just to see what would happen, and yeah, this this really needs drivers. Without drivers, it kind of crashes things. So I went to Google and Googled the errors that I was getting when I was trying to install the drivers. I had to turn off read only, and then boom, I could install the drivers no problem. When I was done, I turned read only back on again. So after a quick reboot, I was off to the races, kinda. It works, but for some reason, the mapping on the screen is really kind of quirky. The cursor is not lining up with the screen properly. So as I move down the screen, the alignment gets more and more off. This makes drawing on the screen really, really difficult. I tried fixing this in several different ways, just playing with the drivers, trying some different stuff, but I wasn't able to fix it. For now, I'm gonna take the loss and move on. Now, before we get to the next option, I do wanna shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. You already know Squarespace can build you a great website, but they also give you all the tools you need to take your business to the next level. Level. Start by checking out all of the insights available in their analytics. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are the most effective. Improve your website and build marketing strategy based on top keywords and the most popular products and content. Squarespace also provides SEO tools. Every Squarespace website and online store comes with a whole suite of integrated features and useful guides that help maximize prominence among search results. And of course, you can stand out in any inbox with Squarespace's email campaigns. Collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like the colors and your logo. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brad Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's look at the best. The Steam Deck is a fully functional computer. It is a PC. You can install Windows on it, and so that is exactly what we're gonna do. Now, right now, dual booting into Windows isn't officially supported by Valve. That is something that they're working on, and they will be rolling out in the future. What I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be taking a little micro SD card. I'm gonna be installing and running Windows off of that, so that way I can dual boot between my Steam Deck with Steam OS and Windows, which is gonna be on that SD card. This was surprisingly easy to do. There are a lot of steps here. It did take me several hours to do. Most of that time was spent just waiting around for things to either download or install, but it wasn't hard. You will need another Windows computer to get started because you have to create a bootable drive, and the only way to do that is with a Windows computer. I'm gonna link down below the uh, tutorial I followed it's on a channel called Game Tech Planet. If he ever sees this, thank you so much. Your tutorial was phenomenal and very easy to follow. Now, getting Windows up and running, I would call fiddly, but once it's set up, this is just as easy to use as any other Windows computer. And with Windows running on the Steam Deck, all options are on the table. That little drawing tablet that was a little funky on Linux, yes, it runs perfectly here. And any other drawing tablet you may have, you're gonna be able to install it. I'm still using Krita here, but you can install any of Adobe's apps. You can run Affinity Designer, any drawing app in the known universe, you can install on Windows. Okay, fine, not Procreate. I mean, any Windows drawing app you can install. So it might seem that Windows is really the best option. There are some pros and cons. Obviously the pros are you can do really anything here. The cons are is that every time you want to play a game that's on your Steam Deck, you're gonna have to like boot out of Windows, restart the whole device and boot back into Steam OS. I didn't have any problems with speed. I didn't really notice anything when I was drawing, but your applications are going to be running faster if you install them natively on your Steam Deck than they are if you're running everything off an SD card. Overall, I was really impressed with this whole thing, especially that second option. You don't have to install Windows. You could just have a nice, portable drawing tablet that you could take with you, plug in with a USB-C cord, and you're good to go. Drawing in Krita and Linux desktop mode, it's it's fantastic. So that was awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to be to try with the Steam Deck related to drawing? You know, let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.